Australia is a continent of deadly and dangerous animals. From venomous snakes to lethal spiders, it seems just about everywhere you go is populated with some of the deadliest creatures known to man. With all this in mind, you might wonder what kind of person would charge right into it head first. Well, I'll answer that. It's me. My name is Jack, and I spent my entire life traveling all over the globe to find the strangest and most dangerous animals alive. I'm willing to get in close where others wouldn't dare in order to uncover and share the truth about even our deadliest and most misunderstood animals. Today I have a special target in mind. I'm on a mission to find one of Australia's most infamous spiders to see how dangerous these spiders and their bites truly are. Join me on this adventure and let's find out truly how dangerous is the white-tailed spider. Now essentially these spiders might be a little tricky for me to find out here in the Australian wilderness. People most commonly encounter them in their own homes, much like the brown recluse. But I'm hoping that by checking at the base of trees, checking in loose bark and things like that, we can scrounge up one of these spiders because I really want to show you all and talk to you all about some of the uh, wives' tales, some of the legends, some of the perhaps even misinformation that surrounds these arachnids. But I've got my work cut out for me, folks, because it's gonna be quite the hike. You can see we're in dense scrub, dense bush here in Australia and uh, plenty of trees to check, plenty of places to look. But we'll keep our eyes peeled and fingers crossed we get the spider we're after. These spiders do not get very large and could prove difficult for me to find in this vast forest. I'm dedicated though to finding one to shed some light on this beautiful species. Do they deserve this horrific reputation or have we been too quick to blame these animals for something they might have nothing to do with. We'll have to find one first in order to find out. Now, it looks like there's a lot of good trees right up here. A lot of old trees, weathered bark, kind of just flaking off. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So uh, we're gonna split up, spread out, cover some ground. Hopefully uh, one of these spiders will be within our grasp. After I had about lost all hope, I decided to check some bark around the base of a tree, and I found easily one of the biggest white-tailed spiders we possibly could have found. Uh, I swear I just saw the biggest white-tailed spider ever. Underneath this little piece of bark, we're done into this leaf litter. Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Oh, <laughs> that thing is monstrous. Look at the size of that white tail spider. I think we've got our video. Take a look. That is a monstrous female white tailed spider. One of our biggest arachnid targets for the trip and one that's fairly tricky to find. I was just kind of checking some of this kind of peely bark down here. There was this big piece that was just had fallen down. And right, there was a little piece that is broken off now, right in this kind of little shelf of bark was this lovely female whitetail spider. But take a look at the size of this impressive arachnid. <laughs> yes! Now these spiders live a very similar life to our own brown recluse spiders back in the States. And in more ways than one. Firstly, their ecology is remarkably similar. These white-tailed spiders enjoy hunting in and around trees as well as in human dwellings or sheds for other spiders in particular. This may partially be the cause of their nasty reputation as they are some of the most commonly encountered spider species inside human homes. This leads us to our second and honestly most critical similarity between these spiders and the brown recluse. 
people believe these spiders to cause massive necrotic wounds. That's right, just like the brown recluse spiders in North America, the white-tailed spiders are culprit number one in cases of mysterious open sores or necrotic wounds. But is this truly the case? And are these spiders actually to blame? This is a species of spider that my audience in America has probably never even heard of. But this is a creature that might seem all too familiar. I have actually personally dubbed this lovely little spider here the Australian Brown Recluse. Not because of the similarity in these spiders' evolution, not because these animals are closely related, but because the same culture that surrounds the brown recluse also surrounds the wonderful white-tailed spiders. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, folks, my audience in America knows that I've taken quite a few spider bites in my day, some of which have been a doozy, and I still have some scarring from the lovely brown recluse. But I took the bite of the brown recluse to show people that although many people swear up and down and left and right that they've almost lost a limb or lost an arm or lost even a loved one from the brown recluse spider, there's really no scientific evidence to back up that those spiders are as deadly or as dangerous as many people and even doctors claim them to be. It is actually even more the case for these white-tailed spiders. People in Australia often report spider bites, large necrotic lesions, very similar to the brown recluse bites back in North America, and they overwhelmingly attribute these bites to these white-tailed spiders. Now, maybe one of the causes for this is that these spiders are fairly sympatric with humans. They are often found inside houses, inside closets, garages, and things like that. So to find one in the wild might be an uncommon thing. Having myself tested the bite of the brown recluse, not once, but twice, I am happy to say that this is not necessary for me to do today. Why? Well, that's because a team of researchers in the early 2000s actually tested and observed over 100 confirmed white-tailed spider bites and found zero evidence that their bites can cause extensive necrosis. What this means is that whatever necrotic sores people are claiming come from white-tailed spiders are likely caused by something else entirely. Whether that be infection or something else, it all but completely absolves these spiders of any blame. In our native brown recluse, there's at least some tissue dissolving components in their venom, which in some cases can cause mild derma necrosis, but these components appear absent in the venom of these white-tailed spiders. Now, I'm going to attach a link to this study on these bites in the video description if you'd like to take a closer look. But for the most part, even the severe envenomations resulted in little more than a sore bite area and mild systemic reactions like nausea and headaches. A fairly harmless bite compared to some of what other Australia spiders are capable of. All right, folks, I'm gonna see if I can get this lovely little spider on my hand here. She seems very disinterested. You can see uh, the second she touches my skin, she goes, ah! That sounds horrific. No, thank you, Mr. Jack. But that's just a great example. These spiders really want nothing to do with us. I imagine that we feel a little bit icky to them, nice and sweaty and covered in oils. They uh, would much rather prefer to climb on a branch or a bit of bark or even the ground over a big sweaty primate hand. You can see she has no problem crawling around on the container. There she goes on my skin, right up my arms. Probably a weird sensation for her. But take a look at that, folks. You can see she's not interested in biting. She's not interested in harming me. She's not interested in doing anything that would cause me to be fearful of her. Once again, a great ambassador for her kind. This is a gigantic female white-tailed spider one of the most feared spiders here in their native range of Australia. But as you can see, this is not an aggressive animal. This is not an animal that wants to hurt me. This is not an animal that wants to bite me. 
It's just sadly an animal that finds itself living in close proximity to humans. And it's just a wild creature trying to survive, trying to adapt to an ever-changing world. And just because we see these spiders close to our homes, just because we believe them to cause dangerous, potentially medically significant bites, does not make these animals evil and does not even make any of those statements true. These are such fantastic and wonderful and well-adapted little spiders, and we really have no reason to fear them at all. Take a look at that, folks. Beautiful little spiders, fantastic little critters, and not an animal to be worried about in the slightest. Now, in addition to a complete absence of necrotic lesions developing as a symptom of white-tailed spider bites in this study, there was also a complete lack of infection as well. Now, this was quite interesting to me as I do feel that secondary infection is a potential threat in a bite like from a brown recluse. If not kept clean, the mild necrosis from a brown recluse bite could, theoretically, become seriously infected, which could result in more serious systemic effects and potentially life-threatening symptoms. It is fascinating to see that this does not appear to be the case at all with white-tailed spider bites, as in all 100-plus confirmed bites documented in this study, absolutely none of them resulted in infection at all. Another example of how these spiders are likely a scapegoat for the blame of these necrotic lesions and not the true cause. It would appear that a bite from one of these spiders is almost entirely harmless other than some mild discomfort and itchiness. I think we've uncovered the truth about the bite of these lovely spiders. We're gonna let our lovely spider friend back on her way. As you can see, harmless arachnid. We'll put her right back onto her little bit of bark there. She can uh, live out the rest of her days doing what she loves best, being an awesome spider. Well, my friends, thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something and maybe I opened your eyes a little bit about the plight of the poor white-tailed spiders. Not an animal to fear, not an animal backed up by scientific evidence that is capable of harming a human being significantly, but, uh, but a very special, very cool, very misunderstood species. So my friends, that's really all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Hope maybe I opened your eyes a little bit, opened your mind about the lovely white-tailed spider. And I hope that maybe your heart is a little softer towards these lovely little arachnids here. But my friends, it's time for me to leave you all now. So I hope I can leave you with this. This planet full to the brim of some of the most fantastic array of life that has ever existed. We have such a wealth of diversity and it is all interdependent on itself. Everything from the tiniest scary creepy little spiders to the biggest whales in the ocean require healthy and stable ecosystems in order to both survive and thrive. Every piece of the puzzle works together to make the bigger picture. You don't have to like spiders, you don't have to like creepy crawlies to understand that they play an important and pivotal role in maintaining the health of their respective ecosystems and our planet as a whole. So thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I hope to see you next week with the next upload. But until then, my friends, Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.